This is very strong. Oh, uh, yeah. But yeah. you should definitely do this. Well, I mean, there's a lot to consider about doing this at a, at a wedding. I, you know, I think we're about to talk about some tricks that you should do for the bride and groom. Yes. Hey everybody, Eric Tate here alongside my buddy Nick Lacapo back for another Penguin Magic Top 10 as determined by you, yes. the viewers. Love it. Love it too. Love it. Yeah. Keep them coming. So if you're if this is your first time watching one of these, if you check out our social media, we've got a great guy running social media named Josh Birch. He runs polls on our Facebook and our Instagram. Be sure to like the Facebook and like the Instagram pages for Penguin Magic if you want to participate in these polls. We throw out a topic, what are your favorite tricks in this particular genre? And then we collate all of those results. And then uh, Nick and I take a look at the products and give you our hot takes. And this week we're doing the top 10 tricks to do at a wedding. Yeah, and you should subscribe as well yeah with the, the little bell they can hit the bell too right? yeah you hit the bell as a matter of fact i think i'm gonna put an icon right here ding you d you're probably on the wrong side yeah it's probably who knows but yeah. um yeah we do do these a lot and <laughs> uh, they're all user submitted so yeah top 10 tricks to do at a wedding and this is kind of a fun one because i don't think people realize this you and i pro both perform at a lot of weddings it's really one of the only gigs that i enjoy doing yeah it's you know I mean, it's secretly kind of one of my favorite you know yeah. it's like it's it's walk around magic at a cocktail hour but mm -hmm. like you and, know you're only going to be there for an hour and <laughs> yes yes yeah. yes yes and i you know and this list is interesting because mm -hmm. after i saw what some people voted on here yeah. i'm like okay are these tricks to do at a wedding if you're hired or if you're like just hanging out yeah you know I think what i mean that's a there good... is a difference yes. uh, here yeah so, and we'll probably get into it as we get into the list yeah because i think you and i both have some specific ideas about what to perform at a wedding yeah, yeah. versus like because we usually work them uh, although i was just a guest at a wedding sure and i didn't do any magic yeah yeah and that's ideal yeah sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> let's uh let's get into it with uh number 10. yeah number 10 number 10 is a trick called election by eric ross and so we have it here right yeah we do this is an old school paper crane release right Right here, election. Uh, just to break it down, it's a it's a two deck trick. Hand somebody a red deck, hand somebody a blue deck. They put their decks behind their back. They choose a card. They reverse that card in the deck. They bring the decks back out. They spread the cards. This is all hands off by you. It's revealed that both of the cards that were reversed in the deck match. So they both have the seven of hearts. Killer. Yeah, great trick. Look. Old, 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 like, uh, methodologies here, but, like, strong reactions. Mm -hmm. But there's a kicker here. When they turn their cards over, they're the opposite color of the deck. So if the That's person cool. that had the red deck now, they, they turn the card over, it's a blue card. Yeah. Uh, you'll get great reactions with this trick. Um, it comes on this DVD. Funny enough about this DVD as well is that it is kind of like an older, like, multi-trick DVD. Yes, oh. it's for election, but there's a, uh, there's like a, oh, that's cool. an eaten and restored lollipop on here. There's a, uh, like, a ring thing on here. There's a card through bill. So there's all sorts of stuff on this DVD. Yeah. All good tricks. It's, I feel like a lot of the people who watch these, I don't know if you're, if you're the age of Nick and I, like, you remember back in the day, the multi-trick DVDs yeah. were, like, where it was at. DVDs like, came with a lot of stuff on them oh, back in the so, day. Yeah, so this like, is kind of one of them. That's great. Um, yeah, not a trick I would do at a wedding. No. Uh, not even a trick I would do as a guest at a wedding. Mm -mm. Number one reason, it uses two decks. Yeah. I'm not bringing two decks of cards with me uh, to do this trick. This is a great trick. That does nothing to do with the... With, I just wouldn't bring it to a wedding. Yeah. Or put it in my set. This is the kind of thing that, like, you got to have, like, a backpack that you're carrying around where you're going to, like... Sure. You're going to throw it in, like, the, the outside pocket where you're going to, like, keep a couple of tricks to do with yeah, your no, buddies at a moment's notice or something like that. I get that, it. But. It's two people. They're making a connection. They're both picking the same thing. Like, yeah. I, I get thematically why it's on the list. Yeah. But as far as practical reasons go, like, doing it on a wedding, it's yeah. number 10, okay? Yeah, I it's mean, pretty it's low on the 10. list. We understand why. Um, but, yeah, yeah not, not something that I would be like, yeah, let's, let's, we're going to the, let's bring election. No, yeah. election is something I do in, like, a close-up show. Oh, yeah. You know, because it's, yeah. it's that strong. Yeah, I, I, you know, I've seen a number of tricks like this where the, the different color cards yeah. end up on the other side. One, it's easy to do, mm -hmm. which, is, which is handy because there's a little bit of gimmickry involved, but the gimmick's not, like, crazy difficult no, no, or anything No, it's like great. That. It's, uh, it's, it's cool. Um, I like, w strange choice for this, but, uh, but great trick. And I'm a little glad it's on here because it sort of brings it up for us so that we can. Yes. Because sometimes, you know, we like, we forget that you go deep in the library, there's some cool stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, number 10, election, that's what you got. 
Let's move on to number nine. Uh, this is a release by Sans Minds. This is <coughs> Love. And uh, this is kind of a cool one. I actually like this one, and I can see doing this one at a wedding. Essentially what this is, is you have a, a deck of cards. Uh, you have uh, like four people, and you have somebody call stop as you're dribbling the cards. You turn over uh, the, the card. You turn the cards face up. You've got four cards, and you say, well, this one will represent you. This one will represent you. Uh, and then you sort of notice that, oh, they might kind of spell something, but it's kind of hard to make out. And then you give the cards a little flick with your finger. You just sort of like run, uh, or I think you even like uh, sort of wave it near the deck. And then it transforms to spell love, L-O-V-E, on the cards, and uh, it's a visual transformation. It's pretty cool. You get pre-printed gimmick cards uh, that come with this. Uh, so it's a, it's a queen, and then this, I think, I uh, can't remember exactly what that one is, but then there's like a three that's like printed backwards so that it spells L-O-V-E. Yeah. use the seven for the L. The change is really cool. Yeah, uh, the change I gotta is say. good. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, for, for, it's really for anybody. It's it, not that big a deal. It really is. Uh, there's, a, there's a very cool little change that, that I'd kind of forgotten about, mm. uh, but it's definitely like, I would use that yeah, kind yeah. of a change. Uh, you're essentially swapping out the bottom three cards for another three, but I'm not really giving anything away here because what you need is the, is the pre-printed cards. Now, the, the real question is, is, though, would you do it at a wedding? You know, I can see you doing this at a wedding. This is almost, like, it's almost in the Valentine's Day world. It really is. I think that, like, this is the kind of thing that if you were talking about, like, oh, those two clearly love each other or yeah, something yeah. like that, I, it's, you would have to stretch to come up with a routine sure. for this. Right. But like, you could get there. Yeah, because, like, you're, I mean, are you doing it to the bride's mom out in the lobby, or are you doing that trick to the bride and the groom? I feel like it's something where if you like did this to the bride and the groom and you were like, why don't you pick a couple of cards and you pick a couple of cards. Sure. These represent you two. Oh, but you know what? You know what the way it would really represent you two is if it's spelled love. Sure. You know, you're, you're not doing the routine that Sans Minds teaches on this, but you, you could get there. Sure. I think that any, almost anybody watching this could come up with a routine using the change, using the gimmick card. So should it be on the list, I guess? I think it should be on the list. Okay. It's... As presented in the DVD, no, no. It, it should be it should be a Valentine's Day trick. But the the core idea puts it on the list, and it's at number nine. So yeah, it's number I, nine. Can, I can see why it's why it's there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, moving on to yep. number eight, and number eight, oh, we're still going to be battling over this like Valentine's Day wedding stuff. Yeah, for a moment here. Number eight is by one of my favorite magicians, Patrick Kuhn. Great, great guy. Share the love. Now. Um, Patrick does these, well, not, maybe not so much anymore. Mm -hmm. We're in 2021 20, as we're filming this, and Patrick's yeah. like a big superstar oh, of yeah. magic. You know, but when, when Patrick was back in, I think the when is this? Tw from 2012, um, he oh, had a viral video. You guys went deep I in know, the library on this list. Yes, they did. He had a viral video um, of this Valentine's Day routine that he put out. Oh, yeah, okay. I remember that. And it's, it's, it was a very, like, you know, the, the routine itself on the video is not made for, like, live performance. It's very almost, like, manipulation style. And it's edited. So, like, there's all sorts of moments that, mm -hmm. you know, were really cool. People loved it. And I guess they turned around and made a, a product out of it. That's okay. cool. And there's an actual routine in here that you can do, and it comes with all the special cards and the DVD and everything. Point is... This is, this is yeah. no, this is a Valentine's Day trick, yeah. like one hundred percent. This is like, even in the presentation that you'll see, it's like sharing your love with other people, right? Um, I don't know. It's May cool, but not you're not doing this at a wedding. Is this sort of live in that realm where you're like, maybe you're not doing Patrick's routine, but you're like rewrite. If you you could shoehorn it into a wedding if you rewrote the routine. Sure, I guess. I mean, these cards are pretty specific. Okay. I mean, like, there's certain th – you'll have to just go on YouTube and, and watch the actual viral video, and you'll see, um, you know, there's cards that are transforming. You know, this heart has, like, a little 0% on it, and it starts to slowly fill up with red, and yeah. and the envelope changes into a rose. And I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on in here, but, like, it's again, if you're doing magic at a wedding, you're not – you're, you're just not doing this. Yeah, trick. I, I hear you. Like, look, Patrick's an amazing creator no, and a nothing against brilliant the at performer. All. It's at, at all. It's great just product. Not supposed to be on tricks to do at a wedding. List. Nope. <laughs> so, uh, but that's uh, share the love at number eight. 
At number seven, uh, we're talking PK Touches, and the best place to learn this one is Banachek's Penguin Live Lecture. Uh, PK Touches is an amazing psychic routine where uh, you, you have two people uh, up on stage with you or uh, in your performance environment, and you uh, tap one person on the shoulder and the other person feels the tap even though you go nowhere near them. There have been a lot of performers who have done a lot of very, very cool work in this area, but Banachek is arguably the one who created and subsequently popularized this routine. Yeah. The question I have is, should this belong at a wedding? I... It's questionable. I can see doing this. Sure. I know a lot of people who do PK touch style routines in walk around. Yeah. I wouldn't do it if I was working the wedding, but if somebody, if I was a guest at a wedding and someone was like, you know, it's, we're at, we're at dinner and drinks and dancing afterwards and someone says, hey, can you do a trick? I could see pulling PK touches yeah. out. Yeah, because now, now we're going to get into some things that are not so much in the Valentine's Day world, yeah. uh, it feels like. Because the answer of like, what is the stuff that you should do at a wedding, in my opinion, is your best stuff. Yeah. Like, what do you know how to do? Because like, it doesn't really matter if it fits a love theme all yeah. that much. It just needs to be your, your, your killer stuff, yeah, right? Maybe you want to like talk about like connections and stuff like that sure. if you're working, but if you're just there, like... I get the thing. You P and PK yeah. Touches, for a lot of people, is one of their strongest routines. I, yeah, I mean, uh, it's... it's Super strong. Yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to keep this YouTube friendly, but like it's just I've seen PK touches. Yeah, wreck people. And it does have that theme of like two people, mm -hmm. you know, have sharing something. So yeah, I, I I can see it on the list for sure. So like I would do it, and and of course if you are working it, super easy to do it there. You don't have to carry really anything yeah. to, to Although be if able you're, to do it. Although if you're doing some of the touches that like Lior Manor adds to it. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, we're not all yeah. Mr. 1A, right? So it's like, uh, yeah. great routine though. And yes. where else can, is there any, Banachek's the spot to learn this, right? Banachek is the one to learn it. So Banachek is the place to learn the original version. And then uh, I believe there, there's a download that Mr. 1A, that Lior Manor yeah. uh, has that goes into additional sort of like other ways. Right. It's, it's more like a supplement uh, to it to learn additional uh, PK touches. Yeah, routines. and I would, I would look at Lior's Penguin Live lectures as well. I'm, he yeah. probably talks about it on one of them. Just look yeah. at the ad copy and but see the, if it's on there. But Banachek's Penguin Live, the first Penguin Live lecture is where you, I believe it's the first, uh, the yeah, first one. Yeah, well, yeah. That's the one that. where you learn from the master. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, number six. <clears throat> number six. Uh, we don't have anything for number six, but it is a trick called Lover's Bands. And um, this is a product that was released by Adam... Uh, sorry, Alan. 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 Sorry, Alan. Alan. <laughs> Alan's a good buddy. I don't know if you know that. I know Alan. No. Alan and I. Yeah. Anyway, that's another video. Yeah. Top ten Alan Wong tricks. Right? Oh, Alan, <laughs> I, so I'm I'm wholeheartedly an Alan Wong fan. His, yes. His products are amazing. Good old Alan. Anyway. Um, this is a routine where you have two red rubber bands that are the, the silly bands that are shaped into hearts. Mm -hmm. And it's a simple routine where you show that they link together. So you have this kind of like pseudo link and then um, you remove them and then you link them together for real and you can hand them out as a souvenir. Um, so there's a product on Penguin that you can get, uh, Lover's Bands. And then also Charlie Fry covers this in his Penguin Live lecture. Yep. And it's a popular trick yeah uh, it's a fun rubber band trick with a souvenir ending so it is a good effect i think so too i mean i i think this firmly belongs on here i can understand why people went for the heart oh. version of this but really any linking bands sure. i think is is the way to go i mean josh birch has got some interesting work on it where he's actually got permission from hondo to teach uh the the way he uh, glues bands. Am I thinking of the right one? I think so. yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember the the name of it. But you know, yeah. really, this comes like right down to PK Touch. Yeah. Rubber bands are great tricks to do at weddings. Yes. Because they're strong and they're easy to carry. Yeah. Right. And they're colorful. And yes, there's sometimes there's kids kicking around the wedding, so it's nice to be able to have something for them. You think? You know. I think that right there is the nail on the head. Is that so? I don't perform for children very often. Right. And, same. And whenever I'm at a wedding, someone always goes, "Oh, Eric's a magician. Can you do something for?" My kids. Right. That actually happened at the wedding that I was at just here yeah, recently. Yeah, you just won on Saturday, right? And yeah, yeah and uh, and I was like, oh, what do I do for these kids? Yeah. And rubber band magic. It's it's saves really, your life all the time. It's really is. easy to yeah. grasp for kids. They can just super get a, get on board. And kids like know rubber bands and like like to play with them. So right. I mean, yes, yeah, this absolutely belongs on there. Yeah, it doesn't have to be rubber bands. 
at a wedding, but it is a good choice. Yeah, you know? so, uh, absolutely. So that's, that's a fun one. Also, I think that there are some routines with things like rubber bands where the rubber bands start out regular and then end up transforming into that. Sure, so yeah. If yeah. you really want to like sort of shoehorn that like love connection because of the wedding. Yeah, routine. I guess we should be specific that the actual product, like, yeah, there's a, you can come up with all sorts of tricks, but the yeah. product here is that there are bands that are actually linked together. Because yeah. as you know, those, that's not an easy thing to accomplish. Yeah. So these are made the pre together. they come pr already pre-assembled yeah. the, the way it is. I, I don't know if they're molded or, or Yeah, I'm not stored, sure of the but, process, but But know. it's Allen, so yeah. it's good. Yeah. And that way you can give them away and yep. it's it's a cool souvenir. We'll move on to number five. This is another product from Sans Minds. This is the Vanishing Ring Box. Mm. Uh, this is good. Um, I yeah. I'm a little curious as to what, so let's talk about it first. Uh, it's a ring box, you put a ring in it, you close the box, you open it back up, the ring is gone. Gone. And then you can put it wherever you no, want. No, it doesn't come back. Uh, it's just, yeah. <laughs> it's a great way to steal a ring. Yes. Um, it's, it's great. Yes. I mean, it's, it's a James Bond device that yep. it, it can allow you to vanish a ring. Uh, it's really cool. Um, I just, you know, I don't have one here that I can show you, but what I can tell you is that uh, we, we got a good buddy of ours, Drew Murray, has used it in his show, yeah, and he swears by it. Yeah, it's a great, a uh, great thing. So sorry, Drew, if you're watching this and finding out that I'm, uh, I'm telling you that you're endorsing a product, but yeah, yeah, he showed it to us and we really liked it. Uh, so, we're probably looking at some video right here of it on there, but this is a utility device that will basically allow you to vanish a ring from a box and put it wherever you want. Right now, I know people put it on this list because it involves a ring. Yeah, right. That's I, that's the only reason I can think of, because, you know, really, where does this have a home? In your parlor or stage show, because yeah. this is something that, like, the ring is going to come back somewhere. So, mm -hmm. like, what is the close-up routine that you're using this for at a wedding situation? Yeah. You know, and, like, while rings make sense at a mm -hmm. wedding, I mean, I'm not saying you shouldn't do ring magic at a wedding. It's, it's just that, like... I, don't, I got a personal rule that I'll do, I do ring magic at weddings, but I never do magic with... The, the bride and groom's ring. Right, Because right. I, you, I don't, they, no, they I just put there. them on. Yeah, I no. don't want them to take them off. That's no. just, this is my personal yeah, choice. Yeah, no, I, yeah. it's not even, I mean, I would agree with that personal yeah. choice in general. I wouldn't even advise anybody to to, to even consider doing that, right? No, no you have no business doing no. that. No, I, I mean, when I perform at a wedding, I do one or two tricks for the bride and groom that I reserve just for them. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, that's give, yeah. an important point too, because like, we haven't really talked about that, but like if you are working the wedding, usually you only get a chance to do one to two tricks yeah. to the bride and the groom, at least here in America. I know it's different in England and yeah. stuff, but like in, in America, it's not that way. Typically, at least for me anyway, when I get booked to do a wedding, it's always the cocktail hour yeah. slash the reception. Mm -hmm. Because as soon as the wedding ends, usually what happens is the photographers grab the bride and the groom and they go do photos. And so all of the guests go to the reception and they're waiting around for the wedding party to show up so everyone can do toasts and celebrate. Yeah. And you are you are literally just performing for those guests. Yeah. And you're just, it doesn't have to be wedding themed. It doesn't have to be anything at all. It just has to be good magic. Yeah, and really like, strong. It's, really, your it, job is to... Distract. In introduce people to each other yeah. and distract them for an hour. Yeah, right? because so, like, the bride's family doesn't know the groom's family. Yeah, the, yeah. The, gr br the bride and groom's friends don't know the families. Sure. It's, it's, yeah, which, actually, is, which is why it should just be your best magic, yeah. right? It's but, really not that much different from working a corporate event. No, no, not really, except yeah. uh, everybody's in a better mood. Yes. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah. where were we? Vanishing uh, ring? Vanishing yeah. ring. So, yeah, so like what's the routine that you're doing at the wedding? Yeah. you got to carry around a ring box in your pocket. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of it's kind of tough. The, I love it, but it's... Yeah. I mean, the only thing that I can even remotely think of is... Because it will vanish things other than rings. It will vanish ring-shaped objects. So if you were going to do like a really wham-bam, thank I mean, you, ma'am trick for the bride and groom that was going to leave them with a souvenir where you were doing something with a ring-shaped object that was not their rings, maybe. Yeah. Otherwise, I'm going to leave this at home. Yeah. Yeah. Great, great, great Amazing thing. product. This might be the best Sands Mind product. I oh, think. arguably. I think I think that's the best thing they ever put out. I really, yeah. 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 All right. Well, moving on. I yeah. Guess. Uh, no, number four. Mm -hmm. Now we're getting into some tricks that I really like. Yes. Um, number four is a routine by Nicholas Einhorn called Nest of Wallets. Uh, we have the um, Supreme Nest of Wallets version here. Borrow a coin or have a coin signed. You make it vanish. And then you reach in your pocket and you pull out a wallet and then you open the wallet and inside that wallet's another wallet and inside that wallet's another wallet 
And then inside that wallet is a little silk, and then you unwrap the silk, and you find the signed coin in there. Or borrow a ring, or, mm -hmm. or whatever object is about the same size as that. Um, it's crazy. That. Yeah, it's great, okay? Like, super strong. Coin, coin slide effect, like that type of effect. It's a ma classic magic trick shop trick. What Nicholas has done is made it into really nice uh, leather wallets that you can carry with you. Yeah. And um, it's just impossible. When you start opening the wallet into the next wallet, into mm -hmm. the next wallet, this is. Yeah. If you've never done a coin slide effect or like nest of boxes type effect, they're really strong. In fact, when I saw this on the list, it, it just reminded me I haven't done this trick yeah. in so long. And I'm like, I, I need to restart doing this trick because it was one of my favorite tricks for a very long time. Uh, great trick for a wedding. All you have to do is carry around that. It's not a card trick, right? You can do it with a ring, you can do a coin, whatever. Okay, I've got a question. Yep. What's, what's the reset on this? Uh, so it resets in the moment. Basically, really? Yeah, because after you take all the wallet out of the wallet out of the wallet, yeah, and you hand the thing back, you're just putting them back in at the table, and in the moment of okay. putting the wallets back together, all right. you're resetting the trick for the next performance. I'm sold, because that was the one thing that, you know, it's like if I was a guest at a wedding and I was going to do the nest of wallets tricks just because I had it on me, because I knew, yep. you know, you know, grandma's going to ask me to do a trick for, for my cousin. So, you know, sure, I would do this. But mm -hmm. as a worker, I would want to be able to reset it. This is it, a worker routine. That is awesome. Yeah, that and then so cool. it also comes with the red silk as well. It's a beautiful wallet, too. Yeah, they're great. Really well made. Now, there are two different versions. Um, this is the Nest of Wallets Supreme. This is the soft version. And then just the regular Nest of Wallets is a more stiff version. I personally like the stiff version. Mm -hmm. um, just they're a little, I find them a little easier to get in and out. But, um, you know. Either, either one. And hey, you know who made the wallets? Our buddy uh, Adam Wong. Alan Wong. <laughs> Alan Wong. Well, there. then you know it's great. So uh, You know who has a crazy routine with this, and you can get on his Penguin Live lecture, is Magic Belay. That doesn't that surprise tracks. you. But um, I forget what happens in it. It's, it's something to the effect where he repeats the effect, where like the coin is signed, disappears, ends up in the wallets. Mm -hmm. Um, and then he does it again, like immediately. And I, I can't quite remember what the there's a there's a thing there that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, you'll just have to get his lecture Ugh. and find out. It's so good. That's it's, so good. Yeah. Well, this is the part of the of the video where we always say, "What should be on this list that you guys missed?" Sure. Uh, so go. Yeah, uh, you okay. Want, so you got something. Yeah, for mine, it's flight 101. Sure. Uh, yes, it's a trick with a ring. I'm not going to do it with the bride and the groom. Right. But it's something we agree on. You're at a wedding. You should do your strongest magic. Arguably, Flight 101 is one of the strongest things that I do in my walk around. And yeah. I know this is one of those things that, like, I'm going to shout from the rooftops yeah. that Flight 101 is amazing. And people are going to be like, yeah, I want to do something else. And I'm like, you're wrong. It's fine. Let me be the only one doing it. Sure, sure. Uh, yeah, and again, no, no pocket space on that. Yeah. You know, it's just a little tiny gimmick that you it, keep in your pocket. If you're unfamiliar with Flight 101, it's by Roddy McGee, the mad scientist from Scotland who creates some of the greatest magic that you'll ever learn. You borrow a ring from someone, it vanishes. You borrow the keys from a spectator, you wave it over your hand to show that the ring has vanished. The borrowed ring appears on the borrowed spectator's keys. It's, again, it, it fits yeah. so well. Spectator's keys. Spectator's Crazy. keys, not your keys. Crazy. Borrowed ring, borrowed spectator's keys. You end clean at the end. So, it's so amazing. Well. The displays are beautiful. Here's the reason I like it at a wedding. Most everyone drove to get there. Sure. Yeah, so I, keys everywhere. I know that there's keys all over the place. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which just, it makes it so that it's... It, there's sometimes when you're at a lot of other gigs, people don't have keys on them. Weddings, there's always keys. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, especially if especially if you pull up to the wedding and there's no valet. I'm like, mm. great, I'm doing flight 101 <laughs> all night. How about you? Uh, well, the I think we've already gleaned a little bit into my approach at weddings. Mm -hmm. I don't like to have a lot of things on me, right? So there's two tricks that I I like to have. This is where mm. I bring out my my special wallets, yep. like peak wallets, yep. and fire wallet. Because oh, yeah. fire wallet will get me a lot of attention mm -hmm. uh, off of that. But um, so I bring the razor wallet with me because for me, it's just a whole lot easier and more interesting yeah. too. Because when I'm at a wedding, I'm trying to meet people and introduce people to other people. I'll I'll like ask people like, hey, who's the who's the bride of the who's the mother of the of the bride? Yeah, here? you know, like I want to make sure I target them. Then I'll go over there and be like, hey, write down. Uh, you know, something important that it means something, you know, like everything is tied in emotionally to yeah. like people and yeah. names and, and, and what's happening in the moment. So anyway, peak wallet stuff's great. 
Um, so raise your wallet yeah. uh, is, a, is a f- fantastic thing. Also, the, the trick that I love to do more than any other trick at a wedding is Colossal Killer. Oh, really? Yeah, uh, because it's a card trick. I don't have to bring out deck cards at all. I, I oh, can approach great. a group of people and just talk. Mm-hmm. You know, somebody names a card. Then I bring the fire wallet out, light that up, you know, get that moment. But then I pull the one card out of my wallet and it's a, you get the off by one. Um, and I, ha- I didn't have to, like, have anybody pick a card or do anything crazy like that. I think yeah. Colossal Killer is a great one. But do- thematically, it doesn't really fit yeah. with what's going on. I understand the list. But, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, that's where I'd be. Yeah. Uh, you know, the only other thing that I can think of that I, I've done at weddings that is not on this list is I do double cross. Oh, oh and, yeah. And it's again, it's one of those like I'm, but I'm not doing it where I'm taking it off my skin. I'm I'm marking one person. I'm you know secretly marking another person, and then I'm moving it over here. Just like, and again, like an introduction, like tell yeah. them something nice. Uh, tell them something secret that they don't know about you. I play like an icebreaker almost, sure. which is like it's a routine I only bring out for weddings. Yeah, and use your best judgment, and you know this yeah. uh, about weddings too, because especially with the girls, they got they spend a lot of time to get dressed up. Yes. for that for yeah. the for the wedding. You could argue you don't want to be putting marker on their hand. True. Right? Uh, because at a wedding, I only do double cross with guys. Yeah. Because if it, rub, it rubs off on their hand, and it, they're almost always wearing dark suits. But look, so it if never, it's a party, yeah. nobody cares, right? Like, yeah, you got to use your common sense. It depends on, on, on the wedding. Yes. You know, yeah, like, yeah. no one's doing Fizz Master at yeah. a wedding. If everybody's <laughs> uptight, you know, maybe double cross ain't the right one, but no. it is always the right one because it gets such a crazy reaction. So. Yeah, exactly. It's like you put it in your pocket, but maybe it doesn't come out. Uh, and the only other thing is... Uh, I always like card and ceiling, too. Oh, yeah, card and um, ceiling is good. just kind of causes a stir, yeah. and you're kind of breaking a rule, right? Because, like, you're not in anybody's house, <laughs> you know? They're like, is that going to come yeah. down? It's you, going uh, I do... So, my coins across ends with a puff of smoke. It vanishes the last right. one. And I know... So, I, if you haven't watched them yet, Nick and I are joined by a gentleman by the name of Sean Dunn for magic matchups. Mm-hmm. And I know we're going to be doing a magic matchup where we pit we pit three different uh, uh, items of the same variety together. We're going to be doing one on smoke devices. Mm. And I'm going to have a lot of opinions there. But I always like a smoke device at a wedding because when you have that puff of smoke, everyone wants to know what it's about. Right. And it's an instant conversation starter, which again... That's what, that's, what we're ta- that's what we're there You're to do. That's what we're there to do. there to start a conversation. Right? That's what they're there to do. And it, it's really about just doing the strongest stuff, yeah. even if you're a guest, yeah. right? You know, so. All right, let's, uh, let's get back to the list because we're closing in on the yeah, top we went events. Yeah, we're on a tangent there. And before we forget, make sure if there's anything on this list that we have talked about that you disagree with or maybe anything that we've missed, let us know. And be sure to hit that like and subscribe button if you agree uh, on some of these things and some of our opinions so that the next time we have one of these videos out, you can, uh, you can be sure to be one of the first people to comment below because we read each and every one of the comments, and sometimes we even comment back. But number three is the floating rose, which Mm. you can learn on Kevin James' Penguin Live Act. This is strong. This is very strong. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, You should definitely do this. Well, I mean, there's a lot to consider about doing this at a a wedding. You know, I think we're about to talk about some tricks that you should do for the bride and groom. Yes. Uh... As far as like walking around in a cocktail scenario doing floating rows, might be might be challenging. You yes, know, not impossible. You d- now, are you doing the floating rows, or are you doing the floating napkin rows? Because you'd you- have to be doing the fl- floating napkin rows. Yeah. I yes, mean, that's because that's what this is essentially. Yes, you know, I. So if you're not familiar with the routine, uh, you basically twist up. Uh, it, uh, there's different versions where you can crumple up a, a napkin and it can dance around, and then you twist up a napkin rose, which is a great thing to learn how to do in you general. Always <laughs> know how to learn uh, make a napkin rose, and then that will float, so it'll stand up in your hand and then be suspended in midair. And then the the finale is um, the rose can be made out of flash paper. Yep. You light it on fire, and then boom, you have a real rose at, at your fingertips, right? So uh, that complete thing, you're not doing at every table. No. <laughs> right. No, but what I what I will say is the core of this yes. is it's a levitation. Yes. And I and it gets back to, you know, you strong, want, you, strong magic. Yeah. So you do a levitation. You want people to ask questions. You want to start conversations. You want people talking around. A levitation, yes. Do you do the whole flo- floating rose routine? Maybe not. Probably not. Do you learn how to make a paper rose yes. out of a napkin because you should always leave those behind wherever you, you should are? Have those. That that needs to be. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. a skill that everyone yes. should need to have. There are elements of this that you should do at yes. a wedding, maybe not the whole thing. Yes, yeah, you're like, especially, because even, 
even I, I could see like doing the whole thing for just the bride and the groom. Yep. Especially if it's like a stand up thing where you're like in front of the mm -hmm. entire place. That's a different scenario because the other thing you have to consider is like at the end, you're technically giving the rose to the bride. She's got no room for, to be holding anything that no. you need to be giving her, right? She's already like, got a bouquet of flowers she's, that she's yeah, got to yeah. throw at a whole uh, at a whole group of her friends. So yes. why are you giving her another flower? Maybe you give it to the groom and you nudge him and he gives it to her. You know, like, I don't know. Yeah. So, like, yeah, I think there's things to take away from the floating rose being at the wedding. Doing yeah. it at a wedding is a whole other ball game. Yeah. Um, but if you were looking for stand-up material to do at a wedding, oh, man, this could be a really cool thing. Well, so our friend Faye Presto was here doing her Penguin Live lecture. Yeah. And she talks about sort of emceeing the wedding, which is because right. uh, weddings in England are a little bit different. Very different. And uh, so she had talked about doing magic at weddings yeah. is different, not weddings in general. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they. She had talked about like sort of like there's always sort of a moment at the head of it yeah. where like she is sort of like giving the toasts, and then at the end maybe she gives right. a toast and then does like a big trick. Yeah. Now she does a, a the news uh, the a bunch of stuff at the newspaper. <coughs> but if you were if you were hired to also MC the wedding a little yeah. bit because the DJ wasn't going to do it or like, whatever, I've seen those clips like yeah. David Penn. I, I love David Penn. Mm -hmm. I see him doing weddings all the time, and they're doing like thirty minute stand-up routines yeah like i've seen doing rubik's cube magic and all yeah. sorts of stuff and again it comes down to do your strongest stuff mm -hmm. right i mean if you if you if you really you got to be a certain type of performer to lean into the theme of love yeah right if that's what you're gonna do yeah. um not not us. for me not not yeah. <laughs> but um we're cold and emotionless i can inside. see why it's here i can <laughs> see why i mean it's a it, it's almost a modern classic of magic at this point it really is um, I mean, the, the, the floating rose if you're not seen it David Copperfield performed it in one of his specials, mm -hmm. and Kevin James does it in his, I think he still does it in the Illusionist tour. He does it wherever yeah. he performs it, yeah. and you can see it on his Penguin Live lecture. Well, get us to number two, Nick. Number two, number two is the greatest wedding trick of all time. Yeah. Should probably be, in my opinion, maybe should be number one, um, just because of the, the order of events, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and that is Anniversary Waltz. Uh, anniversary Waltz is a routine that was, um, well, we have some history on this as well. The, yeah. the, the popular version is created by Doc Eason. And essentially what happens is you have two people choose cards. They both sign their cards. Those two cards are placed in both of their hands. They're placed together. And through the magic and power of love <laughs> and, and Huey Lewis, uh, the two <laughs> cards fuse together and become one yeah. and you turn them over and both of the cards have this signatures on it and you give it away as a souvenir and uh, honestly yeah. maybe the strongest card trick ever you can get it on penguin magic and uh if you do i highly recommend you get this version 1, right here thousand percent yeah it's uh anniversary waltz you can get it on penguin magic look it up it's cosmo presents anniversary waltz by garrett and then garrett thomas and doc eason the important thing to get this is let's all we're all magicians in the room. If you're not a magician, go get a fruit snack. Uh, you're using a double facer. Yeah. And and this particular deck has no double facers in it that you wouldn't want to use. So there's, there's, a, there's a couple things here. Yeah. Number one, um, you can watch the tutorial for this free. Yeah. Uh, it's absolutely free. So just look for that on Penguin, and you'll find out how you can actually see uh, Garrett Thomas. So basically, Doc... Um, came up with the, the popular routine. Garrett loved it so much, and he had his own ideas. They got together, put together this, because Garrett wanted better cards. Yeah. Because if you buy just double facers... Like, half the deck been, is, un, is unusable. I don't know where those double facers came from. No idea. They're, like, all still sitting in a warehouse somewhere. The finish yeah. on them is no good, yeah. and they're just random cards. Yeah. Ten of hearts and two of spades yeah. and whatever. These are specifically designed. You get a bunch of, like, king of hearts on one side, Queen of Hearts on the other, mm -hmm. so you can have the girl pick the Queen of Hearts because you're yeah. forcing this card. Yeah. Um, but there's also a lot of cards in here that have got lots of white space for signatures. Yes. And yes. the and because in the traditional double facers, usually the one side is great for signatures and the other side is like it's like the ten of spades or something like yeah. that. So it's awful. Yeah. Um, and then yeah. of course the finish is good yes. on these. They're just they're gonna fit in your deck and, and operate yeah. like a regular card. Um, uh, wanted to start the ball out there with Christopher Carter as well now, right? Yes. Yeah, because like Christopher was the first uh, the guy to um, basically discover the idea that 
we didn't talk about this in the Penguin Live we Lecture. D- we didn't talk about it the Penguin Live Lecture. We didn't talk about it on the podcast. We both knew about it, and it totally didn't. And it's, it's not a big deal, because, yeah. like, you know, Doc's handling revolutionized this thing. But yeah. I just want to start Chris's name out there as well these days. Uh, just the first yeah. guy to come up with the idea that handing somebody a double face card and say that they were fused together yeah. is a thing. Yeah. Because prior to that understanding, people yeah. were like, why would you ever hand somebody a double-faced yeah. card? No, don't ever, don't ever let a lay that. people know that no. those exist. because. Yeah. So, yeah, Doc's handling was inspired from Christopher Carter's yeah. thing that was in a it was Genie magazine or something. It was something. published in Linking Ring. Yeah. I mean, you know, it, it, the, the magazine for the IBM, for the International Brotherhood of Magicians, I mean, it was, it was free for members for a long time. It got overlooked until Doc Eason, you know, shined yeah. up into what it is. So, back to the trick. Yeah. Um, just one of the strongest tricks, card tricks you could possibly oh, yeah. do. I don't. I do this not at just at weddings. I do it all the time. I love carrying a double facer on me. Um, and then Garrett has very important uh, handling additions mm-hmm. to the original routine that I also use, um, which you'll learn on the video there. It's. Um, I, I, think I mean, if we did the top ten strongest card tricks of all time, this is on there. Yeah. So uh, yeah. It's. It's an impossible object that you can give away. Yeah. And I, it doesn't get much stronger than that as far as like cementing a, a magical memory with your audience. Right. And, and, and what's great is if, if, you have, if you get a chance to do a trick to the bride and groom, mm-hmm. you can do this trick. Um, you can theme it mm-hmm. to be emotional, about love, about weddings. You can theme it to be funny, whatever. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, is that they get to keep that object at the end, and it's not an intrusive object to be giving them. You can give this to the groom. He can put it in his jacket pocket. Yeah. It's not a big deal. Um, and a lot of times when you do this, if you see them 20 years later, they'll be like, we still have that card. It's in our wedding album with all the pictures. You know, yeah. that, That's the thing. There's so many great – people have a lot of great stories about this trick, yeah. um, and it um, should be number one. Speaking of number one, uh, that brings us to what, what essentially amounts to a variation on the anniversary waltz, and that is the Siamese waltz uh, by Benny Chikrin. Yeah. Uh, this is a really cool version of Siamese waltz. Essentially what this is is you have two different cards selected, the two different cards are signed, you put them together, you tear them in half, and you put them back together the opposite way. Yep. Uh, so, so it looks like that. Yeah, so it looks like this right here. So you got one one side card on one side, one side card on the other, and you end up with two of these, so you can give them both away. Yeah. Uh, this is These go out of stock all the time. So if you ever see this on Penguin Magic and you do it or you're interested, buy immediately because the people who do this do it a lot. Yeah, because yeah. this is a special gimmick card yeah. that is going to get destroyed every time you do yeah. it. I mean, similar to Anniversary, anniversary. Waltz, yeah. except that these are... <laughs> The, the process to make those is a lot different. Yeah, yeah. There's uh, there's a whole lot of people who make these uh, f- uh, for us, and it's a it's a small army that puts these together yes. every time we get it. Yeah. Uh, this is a, arguably a very very strong trick. That, again, well, it's in the same world as anniversary waltz. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's just you know the the impossible object is becomes even more impossible. Um, it, should it be number one? I mean, I'm just keeping Anniversary Waltz number one yeah. because it's the it's the godfather of that, right? Yeah. So, like, you know, show it the respect it deserves, right? Uh, you know, I I, I got to be honest. Um, if I was if I had a choice between the two at a wedding, I would prefer Anniversary Waltz just because it's it seems more impossible to me. I don't know why, but it seems more you mean impossible this in my seems mind. Seems more impossible. No, I think Anniversary okay, Waltz yeah. is more impossible in my mind than Sia, than Siamese Waltz, yeah. even though this is really cool. I mean. Do this trick at weddings. You should. Yes. But I think that for the bride and groom, anniversary waltz, because you're giving one object to a couple. Yeah. This is something that I would do for the guests sure. instead. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, this is, again, this is going to go around the room, start those conversations. You're going to mm-hmm. see, you're going to have more people having those conversations, whereas that is like a more special, anniversary waltz seems more special to me for the bride and groom. And I like it because it's just strong. Right. Yes. Do your strongest stuff. This is also something you could consider for television. Yeah. Right. Like it, it, it because it's that strong. And right? it's not that hard to oh, do. Oh, there's nothing to it. Yeah. Actually, the, it's the, easier than anniversary walls. Yeah. Like the say. tearing of the card is what actually makes it happen. Yeah. It's wild. It, yeah. And you it's, don't that's do a, anything. That's a weird thing to say. Yeah. But. Yeah, I mean, not that anniversary waltz is hard at all. No. It's not. Um, and I don't think anything on this list is terribly hard. A lot of this stuff is, like, pretty accessible material. Yeah, I think all of it's pretty pretty simple. Yeah. 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 Well, well, it was a weird one. Yeah, that was a weird one. Yeah. Where we, we got a little combative with you folks. And uh, I think, I think okay. we could have been more clear on the theme. I think so. Yeah. I yeah. think maybe it's our fault. Yeah. Is it our fault? No. 
Not at all. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. Uh, please, again, uh, like and subscribe uh, so that you can get notified whenever we make these videos, and you'll be able to uh, tell. Uh, uh, you'll be able to find out more of uh, the top ten tricks in magic that you guys are the ones who who came up with. Uh, if we missed anything, comment below. If you disagree with us, comment below. Tell us your favorite tricks to perform at wedding. We read each and every one of those comments. Uh, like, subscribe. Listen to the Penguin Magic podcast. Uh, look out for the uh, Magic Matchup videos that are coming out. Uh, is there anything else that we need to talk about? We like doing these. We do. And uh, we'll be back for more. Yeah. Uh, thanks so much for watching. On behalf of Nick and everyone else here at the P3 Magic Studios, we'll see you next time.